So good morning, this is welcome to your body, welcome to your practice. I haven't really been um, having us utilize specific props for this particular month, but you can always grab things like you know, blocks if you have them at home, bolster, whatever it is that allows you to be comfortable. So I'm starting out in a constructive rest, which means I have my knees bent, my feet planted wide so that my knees can knock in towards one another. Back of the head is resting on the mat, shoulders are relaxed here. Just lengthening out through the spine, letting the body be heavy whatever you want with your arms. Sometimes it feels nice to place the hands on the belly. This for me provides a sense of grounding of connection. And then arms maybe spreading out wide, palms facing the ceiling for me provides a sense of spaciousness and openness. A little bit of spreading across the collarbones and the chest. You might try both and see which one you prefer. Just close the eyes here. I start to take in this particular body that you brought to your mat today. Noticing how you feel. Noticing what might feel different. than previous days, than previous practices. And notice what might feel similar or normal, whatever that means to you. And we'll start to deepen the breath. Take an inhale through the nose and an exhale through the mouth. Twice more, just like that, inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. One more time, big breath in. Open mouth, exhale. And then start to just gently feel the lips. Keep your jaw relaxed. Start to take the air in and out through the nose. So as you cultivate this ujjayi breath, there is a sensation, a feeling, a texture at the back of the throat on both the inhale and the exhale. And it might sound a little bit like um, a snoring sound. It might sound a little bit like an ocean wave. So just pay attention to the sound, the texture, the sensation of the breath. You let your ujjayi breath be the metronome that guides you through your practice today. Let's start to take the arms down alongside the body, palms face the floor. If your legs are stretched out long, begin to bend your knees and plant your feet, this time hip width distance apart. We'll set up for some dynamic bridge to warm up the shoulders, the spine, the hips. So press down through all four corners of your feet. On your inhale, lift your hips up, stretch your arms forward, up towards the ceiling, and then overhead, biceps alongside the ears. And as you exhale, nice and slow, everything comes back to the mat, including the arms. Okay, so we'll do this a few times with the breath. Inhale, press down through the feet, lift the hips, stretch the arms overhead. 
Exhale, lower everything back to the mat. And continue on your own. Breathing in to lift and stretch. Breathing out to relax and lower. 20 more like that. And so the next time you exhale, relax the hips and the arms back down to the mat. Pause there. Shrug your shoulders away from your ears to create a little bit longer neck. Now we'll take a static hold in our bridge. So you're pressing down through your feet. Just lift your hips up. Walk your shoulders underneath your body so they're squeezing in towards the spine. Your choice, you can interlace the fingers to the webbing. The body's still feeling a little bit cool, not quite warmed up for that just yet. Just leave your palms pressing down onto the mat. Now stay aware here of all four points of your feet, especially your toes. Press down through the big toe mound, press down through the pinky edge of the foot and the heel bone of the foot. Slightly engage the glute. See if you can lift the hips just a tad bit higher. Big breath in here. Big breath out. One more inhale. And on your exhale, start to release. If you have the interlace of the hands, release that first and slowly lower the tailbone back to the mat. <clears throat> when you're down there, hug your knees into your chest. Rock a little bit side to side. Good. So we'll start to rock back and forth uh, on the length of the spine. You can take your hands to the backs of the thighs or the backs of the knees to help you rock forward and backward. One more time, rock all the way back, all the way forward, and then come up to a seat. And we'll arrive into Dandasana staff pose. So the legs stretch out long, hands alongside the hips. You're sitting up here nice and tall. Reach back underneath the glutes, pull that flesh away so that you're sitting on those bony protrusions of the sit bones. Okay, hands again alongside the hips. <clears throat> Flex your toes towards your face so you're active through the legs, your quadricep muscles even engaged here. Deep breath in, deep breath out. One more inhale and exhale. We'll set up for reverse tabletop, so we'll bend the knees. I'm gonna slightly turn my fingertips out to the side. Bending your knees, plant your feet, lift your hips up here. You're straightening out through the, your arms and you're just lifting your hips as, as high as your body allows, right? So this is your inhale breath. And then we'll add that bit of dynamic movement. On our exhale, the hips will lower, the legs will straighten out, and maybe you hover the hips back. So it's a little bit of a forward fold and dandasana, kind of a cross between the two. So your inhale again, Rock your hips forward, lift your hips up towards the ceiling. You're pressing through the palms of the hands. Your exhale, hips lower and rock back between the hands. Okay, inhale, press through the heel bones, press through the feet, lift the hips. Exhale, lowering, lengthen out through the legs. Twice more, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. One last time. It's okay if this isn't quite as fluid as you want it to be, that's okay. Set your hip bones back down. Come back to Dandasana, straighten out through the legs. Relax your shoulders away from the ears. See if you can grow tall here through the spine. Another breath in, breath out. Good, we'll cross the ankle. Bring the hands forward now, tabletop, just normal tabletop. 
Walk your hands a little bit more forward of your shoulders. So it's a longer tabletop. Begin to draw circles, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. Let your head relax. Just allow this to be, you know, anything you want it to be, however far forward you want to go, however big of a circle you want to draw. Connect back with your ujjayi breath. We'll change directions with that circular shape or change pattern. Continue to breathe, nice, deep, slow belly breath. Good, now come back to your center. Uh, stay on your knees, but walk your hands forward. One more handprint, so you have a long arm. Keep those arms straight. Start to move the chest towards the mat. So puppy pose, puppy dog pose. It's kind of like a cross between downward facing dog and tabletop. So your arms are active here. The palms are pressing down, but the forearms, the elbows, and the triceps are actively engaged away from the mat. Your forehead can relax onto the mat. Your chest relaxes towards the floor. Your hips are still lifting. So actively press down through the feet, through the knees. Feel the hips lengthen up and back. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more inhale here. And then on your exhale, pull your heart forward. Find tabletop. A few rounds of Chakra Vakasana. So this is um, dynamic wheel is the translation. Our exhale all the way back to child pose. Our inhale forward to some version of a back bend, right? So it can be, if, if you feel like lengthening out into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, you can, but it can be a little bit less dramatic and it can just be a, a cow shape. Exhaling all the way back. Inhale, pulling the heart forward. Find that cobra-like spine. Continue. Dynamic movement with breath. Twice more on your own. Pay attention to that ujjayi breath. Feel the texture, listen to the sound. Good. Let's shift the hips up and back to tabletop. Curl the toes under. Find downward facing dog. Let your down dog be fluid. Let your knees bend. Let your head relax. Making any adjustments that the body is asking for. Stay connected to that breath. Three more breaths here. Actively pressing the palms down, feeling the hips lift, feeling the heels become heavy. Last two breaths. One more breath. Inhale, shift forward, find high plank, pause. Lengthen out through the heels, the crown of the head shoots forward. Press the floor away, there's a slight round in the upper back. Hug your navel up into your spine. Quadriceps again here are engaged. One more breath in. Breath out, knees to the mat. Hips back to the heels, child's pose. 
Big breath in. Big breath out. Okay, so adding on that chakra vakasana, including downward facing dog. So at, on your inhale, pull the heart forward any amount. Find your back bend of choice, low cobra like spine. Exhale back to tabletop, curling the toes under, lifting the hips all the way up and back, downward facing dog. Big breath in here. Breath out, high plank. Inhale and high plank. Exhale, knees to the mat, hips to the heels, child pose. Okay, so this is our flow. Just for now, breath in, child pose. Breath out. Inhale, pull your heart forward, back bend. Exhale, tabletop. Curling the toes, lifting the hips, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale here. Exhale forward, high plank. Pause, breathe in. Exhale, knees to the mat, hips to the heels, child's pose. Inhale in child's pose. Exhale in child's pose. Inhale forward. Maybe it's low cobra, maybe it's upward facing dog. Exhale, tabletop to downward facing dog. Okay, so full back cycle and down dog. And then I'll set you free, move through that flow one more time on your own. When you're ready, begin. Just let the rhythm of your breath guide you. When you arrive back into downward facing dog, pause there. Three deep breaths. From downward facing dog, we'll walk our hands back to meet our feet. So we're going to arrive into a forward fold at the back of the mat. When you get to the back of the mat, generously bend your knees. Feel free to let your body sway right to left. Let your head relax and be heavy. Good. So adding on half Surya Namaskar A. Eh? Inhale, press down through your feet, pull your heart forward, fingertips to the shin. Exhale, refold, Uttanasana. Inhale, press down through your feet, stretch your arms forward, come all the way up to standing. And exhaling your hands to your heart, pausing here in Samastiti. Relax your shoulders, close your eyes. Bring your awareness to the soles of your feet. Bring your awareness to your hips, the whole length of your spine, your shoulders, and the crown of your head. Big breath in here. Big breath out. Inhale, blink the eyes open, stretch the arms out wide, reach up. Exhale, fold all the way back in, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, fingertips to shins or hands to heart. Exhale, fold. Walk the hands back out to downward facing dog. 
let that down dog be longer, a longer footprint. So when you get to where you think you would normally stop in your down dog, walk your hands a few inches more forward. Deep breath in here. Deep breath out. Inhale, stretch your right leg up and back. Exhale, right foot between the hands. Let your left knee come to the mat. Anjane Asana, stretch the arms forward and up. So press down through the feet. Lift up and out of the waist. Big breath in here. Breath out, hands come back down. Frame out your right foot. Make your way into downward facing dog. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, left leg, stretch that up and back. Exhale, left knee into the chest, plant the foot between the hands, right knee to the mat. Press the floor away with your feet as you stretch the arms forward and up, lifting up and out of the waist. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Bring your palms back to the mat, frame out your left foot. Make your way back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Notice the footprint of your down dog. The tendency to sink back into that shorter stance. Can you Take that longer stride, hands just inch a few, maybe centimeters, millimeters, or inches forward. Let your head relax. Big breath in, big breath out. Inhale, shift forward, find high plank. Pause in your high plank. Knees to the mat, come all the way onto the belly. Elbows underneath the shoulders, find sphinx. So in sphinx, press down through your pubic bone. This is gonna slightly lift your belly, okay? So that will distribute the back bend more evenly so there's not so much tension or crunching in the low back. Deep breath in here. Breath out, curl the toes under, lift the hips up. Maybe you lift the knees, forearm plank. Just like you would in high plank, lengthen the heel bones back, crown of the head forward, press the floor away with the elbows. Exhale, let the knees come back down, belly down, inhale and sphinx. Palms underneath the shoulders, press your way up to tabletop to down dog. Inhale here, exhale here. Inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, take the gaze slightly forward. Make your way up to the top of your mat. Top of the mat this time, Uttanasana. Relax your head, forward fold. Take your left hand outside of the right foot so you can stay up on the fingertips. Bend your left knee, be generous. Keep your right leg straight. Right hand to the low back, turn your chest off to the right. You can keep that right hand at the low back or extend the right arm towards the ceiling, whatever feels best on the shoulder. Big breath in here. Breath out, unwind, fold back through center. Right hand outside of the left foot. You can be on your fingertips there, that feels best for me. Deep bend in the right knee, keep your left leg straight, left hand to the low back. You're turning your chest off to the left. You can choose to keep that left hand at the low back or extend the left arm towards the ceiling. Big breath in. Big breath out, unwind, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Fingertips to shins or hands to heart. Press down through your feet. Exhale, fold. 
Press down through the heel bones, stretch the arms forward and up, come all the way to standing. Exhaling your hands to your heart, Samastiti. Pause here. Again, close the eyes. Awareness to the soles of the feet. Stand tall. Blinking the eyes open, stretch the arms out wide, reach up. Adding on to our vinyasa, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen out through the spine. Exhale, fold, step into high plank. Pause in your high plank. Deep breath in. Breath out, shift forward onto the toes. Feel free to move through chaturanga, knees up or down. Inhale, maybe it's upward facing dog, maybe it's low cobra, maybe it's sphinx, whatever back bend you like. Make your way back to downward facing dog when you're ready. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Find that long stride and you're down dog. Okay. Inhale, right leg high. Bend your right knee. Point that right knee towards the ceiling. So you're opening your hips. Keep evenly pressing down through both right and left palms. Let your left heel be heavy. Big breath in here. Breath out, re-extend the right leg, squaring the hips. Hug that right knee into the chest. Plant that foot between the hands. Spin the sole of the left foot to the mat. Rise up to warrior two. Virabhadrasana two, spread the arms out wide. Adjust the feet if you need. Nice deep bend into the right knee. Relax your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Keep these warrior two legs strong as they are. Take your elbows together, palms facing your face. So we're not binding. We're just taking the outer edges of the forearm bones together, the pinky edges of the palms together. Lift your elbows. Breathe in here. On your exhale, see if you can just pull the pinky edges of your palms and your forearms apart. Inhale back together. Exhale, pull the hands apart. Inhale together. Exhale apart. Twice more. Inhale. Exhale, stay aware of the legs, the feet, your warrior two. Still strong. Re-extend the arms. Good. We're going to transition into Ardha Chandrasana. So right hand reaches down to the floor beyond the right foot. I like to take my left hand to my left hip, dragging that left foot slightly forward and then float it up about parallel with the floor. Okay. So Ardha Chandrasana, left hand can lift towards the ceiling if you like. Attempting to stack the left shoulder on top of the right shoulder, left hip on top of the right hip. You can choose to stay here and just balance, or you can bend that left knee, reach back. Maybe you're binding left hand to left ankle for Chapasana, Ardha Chandrasana Chapasana. Just binding the hand to the foot. Deep breath in. If you have a hold of the foot, kick a little bit into the hand. Deep breath out. Good. All right, so we're going to take a soft, slow transition into warrior one. So re-extend that left leg, bend that right knee, soft landing on the sole of the left foot, turning the hips and the shoulders forward, interlace the fingers to the webbing, take the hands behind the nape of the neck. Okay, so press the back of the head into the hands and the hands into the back of the head. Hug your front ribs into the spine. Big breath in here. Big breath out. Release the hands, palms to the floor. Make your way back to downward facing dog. If you want a vinyasa flow, you can take it. I'm going to skip it. So feel free to move and flow if you like.
So we'll meet in downward facing dog, reconnecting to the breast, that is the bellwether, the metronome. Second side, inhale, left leg, stretch that up and back. Bending the left knee, point that left knee towards the ceiling. Stay strong and rooted through both palms. Let your right heel be heavy. Breath in, re-extend the left leg. Attempt to square the hips forward. Hug your left knee into your chest. Plant the foot between the hands. Spin the sole of the right foot to the mat. Rise up to warrior two, second side. And just settle in here, extend the arms out wide. Adjust your feet. Nice deep bend in that right knee. I mean, sorry, left knee. <laughs> right leg is straight. Good. Same thing we did. So elbows come together, palms facing you. Lift your elbows up, keep the elbows connected. Inhale, just pull the hands apart. So we're just reversing the breath. Exhale, hands together. Inhale, pull the hands apart. Three times, inhale. Exhale. Twice more. So it looks simple, but that probably feels quite um, activating to the shoulders, which it should. That's the purpose. Re-extend the arms, warrior two. Try that slow, methodical transition to Ardha Chandrasana, left hand down, right hand to the hip. Drag that right foot forward a little bit. You're transitioning all your weight onto that left foot as you float the right leg up. Okay. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Balancing here in Ardha Chandrasana or taking that bind, Chapasana, right hand to outer right ankle. Just an option. No big deal if it doesn't happen today. If you do have a hold of the foot, a little bit of a kick into the hand. Wherever you are, two deep breaths. If your right knee is bent, re-extend the leg. Bend that left knee, slow, soft transition to warrior one. Full of the right foot plants. Tempting now to square the hips and the shoulders forward, interlacing the fingers. Heel of the hands to the nape of the neck. And pull your elbows in close, okay? So instead of the elbows out wide and really back bending into this, Kind of frame out your head with your forearms and find a long spine. Stay rooted to your feet, deep breath in, deep breath out. Release the arms, palms down. This time let's step into high plank. Pause in your high plank. Come all the way down onto the belly. Elbows underneath the shoulders, forearm plank. Curling the toes under, lifting the hips. Pause here. Breathe in, lengthen out. Now you can choose to stay in forearm plank or walk the feet forward towards the elbows, dolphin. So hips lift, heels relax, head relaxes. Strong through the shoulders and the elbows. Big breath in. Breath out, walk yourself back out into your forearm plank. And then knees down, hips down, sphinx. Full breath in in your sphinx. Breath out, palms underneath the shoulders. Feel free to move back towards child's pose or down dog. Whatever feels most appropriate for you. And 
We'll take three breaths, three breaths in stillness and rest. Just reset. Last two. Last one. Good. Inhale, so from down dog, if you're in child's pose, make your way to down dog. Lift your heels up. Bend the knees, slight gaze forward, step your way up to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And from here, Utkatasana, bend the knees, sink the hips. Lift the heart and the chest. And let this Utkatasana be uh, easy, right? Like you're not finding the lowest Utkatasana. We're gonna be here for just a little bit. Eagle arms, right elbow on top of left. And then you can double wrap at the wrist or you can grab your shoulders. If you're double wrapping at the wrist, your fingertips shift slightly off to the right side and your left ear moves towards your left shoulder. Good, deep breath in here, deep breath out. Fingertips move back in front of the face, stretch the arms out wide, reach up and overhead, stand up. Exhale, fold all the way in. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Once more, Utkatasana, bend the knees, sink the hips. Lift the chest and let it be an easy Utkatasana. Second side, eagle arms, left elbow on top of right elbow. Grabbing your opposite shoulders or double wrapping at the wrist. If you have that second wrap, fingertips move off to the left, right ear to right shoulder. Big breath in. Big breath out. Hands move back in front of the face. Unwind the arms, reach up, stand up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasa. Exhale, palms down, high plank. Option to move through Chaturanga, Up Dog, or any variation of a vinyasa flow that suits you. Meet me in downward facing dog. Find that long downward facing dog, inch your fingertips forward, let your chest and belly relax towards the thighs. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Okay, adding on to our vinyasa flow, right leg, lift that up and back, bending the right knee. Option to take the right foot behind you to the mat or the floor. Opening your chest towards the ceiling. It's like this um, cross between vashistasana. So you're balancing on your left hand, your left foot, and the ball end of your right foot. You can stretch that right arm up towards the ceiling, or you could take the right hand to the back of the neck to cradle the back of the head. Deep breath in. And if you've turned over into this kind of flip dog or wild thing, whatever it's called version, come back to, to downward facing dog and lift that right leg high. And exhale, right knee into the chest, right foot between the hands. Simple twist here, leave your left palm underneath your left shoulder as you rotate your right arm towards the ceiling. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Release the right hand. Keep your legs in crescent lunge as you rise up with the arms. So hips and shoulders, everything spraying forward, crescent lunge. A little bit different entrance this time. A little bit different approach. Hands just come to the heart, okay? So from crescent lunge, we'll shift forward into warrior three, pitching the heart forward, hinging at the hips, 
floating that left leg up and back. A variation of Ardha Chandrasana, twisted Ardha Chandrasana, so left hand down. Okay, now you can stay here and just reach that right arm out to the right side, Parivrita Ardha Chandrasana, or you can bend that left knee, reach back with the right hand, grab the inner ankle. So this is that version of twisted Ardha Chandrasana with the bind hand to foot. If you have a hold of the foot, kick the foot a little bit into the hand, a little bit of muscle activation. If you're not binding, don't worry about it. Just work the balance, the strength of the leg, knee joint, ankle joint, two deep breaths wherever you are. One last breath. Good, slowly release. Left leg back, curling the toes under, soft landing into crescent lunge. Lift all the way up into crescent lunge. Hands to the heart, slowly lower that left knee to the mat. Good. And then hands down. Step back, high plank. You can move through vinyasa if you choose. You can also just rest. Down dog or child's pose. You always have these options. Three deep breaths in between sides. All right, left leg lifted up and back from down dog, left leg high. Bend the left knee, open the hip. You can stay right there, or you continue. Left leg comes to the floor or mat behind your right leg. You can take that left arm towards the ceiling or you can cradle the back of the head with the left hand. Opening the chest towards the ceiling as long as your shoulder, your right shoulder in particular feels stable. Deep breath in, deep breath out. So if you've come into wild thing or if you flipped your dog, start to make your way back out, down dog with the left leg high. Exhale, hug that left knee into your chest, foot between the hands, simple twist, right hand down, left arm high. Deep breath in, breath out, left hand releases to the mat, rising up to crescent lunge. Take your time getting there, stabilize through your feet first. There's no rush. All right, so crescent lunge, hands just at the heart. Start to lean the chest forward, you're hinging at the hips, transferring the weight into the left foot. Warrior three. And just take a few moments, balance on that left leg. And then right hand comes down. You could stay on your fingertips. Left arm straight out to the left side. Stay right there or bend the right knee, reach back with the left hand, grabbing the inner ankle. Parivrita Ardha Chandrasana Chapasana option. Okay, that's the hand bound to the foot. And if you've got a hold of that, you're kicking the foot into the hand. Stay active. Wherever you are, two deep breaths. Nice and slow, start to release. We're gonna arrive back into crescent lunge. Take your time with that transition. Curling the right toes under. Bending the left knee, lift the chest, lift the heart. Hands just stay at the heart. Slow, slow, lower, right knee to the mat. Palms down. 
Stepping into high plank and pause in your high plank. Big breath in. Breath out, down to the knees and to the belly for sphinx. Pausing in your sphinx, breathing in. This time interlace through fingers, press down through the pinky edges of the palms and the forearms. Curling the toes under, forearm plank. Pause in your forearm plank, big breath in. Breath out, lift the hips up, dolphin. Walk the feet forward. Three deep breaths in dolphin. Stay active through the elbows, shoulders, neck is long. Hips are lifting high, heel bones are relaxing. One more breath. Walk your feet back out, forearm plank. Set your knees down, belly down. Inhale and sphinx. Palms underneath the shoulders. Make your way back to child pose. Anything you like in your child's pose, any position of the arms, the knees, any variation. Three deep breaths here. Feel the connection of the body with the floor. Feel the texture of whatever your hands and your feet are in contact with. Notice the temperature. Walk the hands back underneath the shoulders, lift up to a brief seat, hands, palms down on the thighs. Just take a moment here, grow tall through the spine. Sitting up nice and tall, eyes closed. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, so blinking the eyes open, we'll set up for our inversion practice, which the options are Taking your mat to the wall, if you're gonna come all the way upside down in Pincha Mayarasana forearm stand, or leaving your mat in the center of the room and practicing dolphin, lifting one leg up and then lifting the other leg up. Both are really great ways to continue to build the agility and the strength of the shoulder. So if wall space is inaccessible to you or going upside down is just not safe for whatever reason, don't feel bad about staying in the center of the room. It's just as valuable. All right, so take a minute. If you need to adjust your mat, go ahead. If you wanna grab any props, like uh, if you were practicing with me um, last week or Monday, I walked through some uses for the blocks and different hand placements, um, which just helps to measure like the distance of the elbows and the hands, right? So I'm gonna give you some time to play with forearm plank, not forearm plank, forearm stand. If you're at the wall, go ahead and come up to your first forearm plank, dolphin, and then practice um, kicking and transferring weight into the forearms. And I'll let you do that on your own. What I'm gonna talk through is dolphin lifting one leg and then the other in the center of the room. So if you're coming along with me, we'll start out in forearm plank. You can interlace your hands to the webbing, press down to your elbows and stretch your feet back, lift your knees up. Keep pressing down to your elbows, walk your feet forward, lift your hips up. We just did this, so it should feel familiar and maybe a little bit more 
accessible. And you can let your head relax here. Transferring the weight into the left foot. Inhale, stretch that right leg high. You're just stretching the right leg high. Maybe you're lifting that left heel a little bit higher. You can kind of rock a little bit more weight forward onto the elbows and then set that right foot down. Change sides, inhale, left leg, lift that up and back. Maybe you lift that right heel a little bit higher, feel that weight transfer. Without hopping, we're just lifting the left leg. And then setting the left foot down. Walk back out into forearm plank. Lengthen out. Pause in child pose or down dog if you like. If you're at the wall, feel free to continue about 10 breaths there. If you're continuously holding or if you'd like to play with that different um, hand placement, feel free to come out, adjust your hands and come back in. Either way, at the wall, you have about 10 breath cycles. If you're in the center of the room, one more time, dolphin, setting up the hands, opposite interlace, opposite thumb on top. Lifting the hips up, walking the feet forward. This time, lift the left leg first. Lift the right heel up, transfer onto the ball mound of the right foot, shift slightly forward. Set your left foot down. Inhale your right leg high. Left heel lift, ball mound of the foot, transfer that weight forward and back. Right foot comes back to the mat. Walk yourself back out, forearm plank. Knees, belly down. You can move back to child's pose from here if you like. Okay, so if you're at the wall still, start to make your way out slowly, gently. Take your time. Pause in child's pose. Let's all take a collective three rounds of breath in our child's pose. Just let that go, let that practice go. Did you feel successful? Did you feel uh, very challenged? Whatever it was, practice letting it go. One more breath here in child's pose. to rise up to a seat, palms underneath the shoulders and curl the spine. And we'll transition onto our backs. In whichever way you like, transition onto your back. Same way we started with the knees bent, feet planted. We'll move through a few rounds of active back bends. Okay. Press down through your feet, knees are bent, lift the hips up. Walk the shoulders in towards the spine, lengthening out through your neck. Palms are either pressing down into the mat or you're interlacing your fingers to the webbing. Three breaths here. Relax your toes, press down to your big toe. One more breath. Release the arms, release the tailbone and the hips. Constructive rest. Walk your feet out, let your knees dry. Breath in, breath out. Okay, second round of an active back bend. If you have Urdhva Dhanurasana in your practice, you've done a lot of work to strengthen the shoulders and mobilize the shoulders. So this would be a really good time to have your Urdhva Dhanurasana practice, wheel post. If you're not feeling it today, if the shoulders are really tired, you're done, you could also just take a restorative back bend. You can slide a prop underneath the sacrum, slightly elevating the hips. Okay, so choosing that next back bend, 
making your way into it. Could be a second round of bridge pose with the hands interlaced underneath the back. If you're in Urdhva Dhanurasana and it's feeling good, you might add a little bit of a rock back and forth. Maybe you lift the heels up, kind of press into the ball mounts of the feet, bending the knees, and then see if you can straighten the legs out. Okay, wherever you are in your back bend, start to release. Take your time on your exit. There is no rush. Good. Constructive rest. Walk your feet wide. Let your knees draw in towards one another. Hands to the belly. Breathe in there. Good. Inhale, extend both your feet and your arms towards the ceiling. Begin to circle out the ankles and the wrists. Let the back of your head, your shoulders, and your hips be heavy. See if you can change the direction of the circles. Opposite pattern. Hug your knees into your chest, rock a little side to side. Reset your feet on the mat. Inhale, extend just your right leg this time. You can take your hands behind the right thigh. Flex your toes towards your face. You can also take your hands up the back of the calf. So anywhere along the back of the right leg, pressing the right foot towards the ceiling, straightening out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Figure four, right ankle to the left thigh, close to the knee joint. Rock this figure four side to side. So leave that left foot in contact with the mat and you're just gonna rock right to left. A little bit of hip opener, a little bit of spinal release. The next time you move the figure four towards the left, continue, relax the outer left leg all the way to the mat or a prop if it, the mat feels far away. Slow the right foot plants on again, the floor or a prop. Option to take the left hand to the right ankle. Option to take the right arm up and overhead. So remember, these are just options. This yoga practice, this asana practice is your laboratory. You're studying the self. Not only the physical external practice, but the internal landscape, the emotional reaction, the energetic response. Three deep breaths here. Start to release and unwind. Coming back to your center. Release the right foot. Inhale, extend the left leg. Hands interlace behind the left thigh or the calf, or even the sole of the foot if it's accessible to you. Okay. But do relax the shoulders. Let the shoulders stay in contact with the mat. 
Let the neck and the throat relax, back of the head soft, heavy. Flex the toes towards the face, breathing into the back of the left leg. Figure four, second side, left ankle to right side towards the knee. Begin to rock your figure four side to side. So you're keeping that right foot in contact with the mat as you go, rolling to the inner and outer edge of the foot. Big or small, doesn't matter. The next time you move off to the right, relax there, outer edge of the right leg, sole of the left foot. Let it come into contact with something tangible, whether it's your props or the floor or the yoga mat. Optional bind, right hand to left ankle. Option to bring the left arm up and overhead. Whatever shape you're taking, deepen into the breath. Let your muscles relax. Three full, deep belly breaths. When you're ready, start to unwind, come back through center. You have some time here to take a final shape, whether that be happy baby or uh, another twist or heading into a particular Shavasana setup, perhaps. Give you the next minute or so to Finish up your asana. Think about how you'd like to set up for some final stillness. When you're ready, start to head into that last shape you're going to make. Seated meditation is always welcome. Extra layers of clothing or blankets. As you're arriving here, let everything that's in contact with the floor become heavy and relaxed. Take a big breath in through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale the air out. Let your back teeth part. Let your tongue widen at the base of your mouth to 
tip of the tongue resting at the bottom row of teeth. Soften and relax the jaw. The eyes sink heavy into their sockets. The flesh around the eyes softens and releases. Become aware of the space between the eyebrows. Focusing your attention and awareness there with the eyes closed. And noticing that vast expansive space beyond your physical body. And what do you see? Darkness. or slowly emerging shapes or colors or images. You will now begin to count backward on your breath, starting at the number 10. Each time you exhale, go backward one count. Next exhale is nine. Next exhale, eight. Each exhalation is like peeling away another layer of an onion. By the time you reach zero, your body, your mind, your breath are established in a rhythm of complete and total relaxation. What can I do to always remember who I really am? Most of our searching is looking for ways 
to discover who we already are. In this, we are forgetful species. And perhaps what Adam and Eve lost when kicked out of Eden was their ability to remember what is sacred. Thus, we continually run into mountains and rivers, run to the farthest sea, and into the arms of strangers, all to be shaken into remembering. And some of us lead simple lives, hoping to practice how not to forget. But part of our journey is this forgetting and this remembering. It is a special part of what makes us human. So what can we do? Well, it is no secret that slowness remembers and hurry forgets. That softness remembers and hardness forgets. That surrender remembers and fear forgets. It is beautifully difficult to remember who we really are. But we help each other every time we fill the cup of truth and hold each other up after drinking from it. Mark Nepo, The Book of Awakening. Begin to bring your attention and awareness back to the body, back to the breath. Back to the time and space that you currently occupy. Slowly adding movement to fingertips and toes. Gently move the head side to side. If you're lying on your back, stretch your arms up and over your head, breathing into the length of the body. And on an exhale, roll off to a side, find fetal position. Pausing in your fetal position is a reminder, an opportunity to remember, no matter where you are on your path, on this journey, in this life, we all came from the same place. Pressing up into your hands, rising up to a comfortable seat. Rooting down through your sit, sit bones, feel your spine grow tall. Joining your hands together at your heart, bowing the chin into the chest. Honoring the infinite wisdom of the heart space. With reverence and gratitude to our practice. May we use the fruits to serve our highest good. May we devote this practice to someone that we love or someone who could use healing. Together we send love and healing to all sentient beings around the world that may be suffering. May they be happy, may they be free. Namaste, yogis. <laughs>